thanks for joining me this is the one the engine's going to go back into the car um, we've got some wiring looms we're going to pop those back onto it while it's on the stand so I'll just run through those quickly and then we're going to get it back in we'll get the crane in let's get that engine in let's get it started if we can there's going to be a sting in the tail on this one though um, so yes yeah, stay watching till the end because um, mm, we shall see if it's all going to be okay let's crack on all right So we've got glow plug wires there. We've got his main loom here. And anybody remember how this went? Yeah, because I can't. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's get it onto the engine. We'll rest it on there and see if we can figure out where all the plugs go and which orientation it is. Well, I'm thinking the injection one has got to go back in first because that's going to plug into that one which is underneath all of this. Yeah, so let's get that big one back out of the way. We'll get these glow plug loom in place because that's got to go in first and clip onto that manifold. Got one there. They just push and clip. One one and the one on the right at the back is a different colour. It's got the brown wire on it. The last one. And they'll come around. That's going to click under there, like that, and that will go on to his main feed. Let's go back to the big one. So I know this looks a little bit daunting, but to be fair, all the connector plugs will only go on one way. You can't really mess them up, and the routing is, is quite yeah, self-explanatory once you get going. Camshaft sensor, we've got that one there. So let's click that in. That one's in. So we've got one. Pressure regulator, pressure sensor, no, the diesel pressure regulator. So that one's that one's in. We've got the cam one in there. We can then come around to the side. We've got a uh, air intake temperature sensor or a map sensor on there. Got that one into place. Got a glow plug relay control unit there. That wants to be connected up to that. And that wants to screen up to the and that slides in the back there and then locks into there with a with a screw. So let's click that into place. Lock that in. And down the side. So they'll go in behind. That will then clip into there. Like so. Uh, and we'll have fuel pump connector in. We've got crankshaft sensor, which we struggled with getting it off, so that can go back in. Put that into place. And then oil sensor down in the sump. Yeah, this is the oil level sensor. And we've got the oil pressure switch which is just below the injection pump. That's that one in. Drop that onto the alternator bolt there for now. And we've got the alternator IND wire that can go on. That's in. Air conditioning and where does that clip to? Is it going in the back of the alternator? Oh yeah, that's there like that. That's clicking in there like that. And then clicking into the aircon pump like so. Looks like he wants to click on there. And then these are going to click into a sensor. Possibly oil pressure, I'm not sure. I don't know, I'll have to find out what that one's for. Yeah, it's the coolant temperature sensor. Push that one in there, click it in. There we go, that one's in. We've got the EGR. Uh, actually, yes, the EGR vacuum connector there, that one's on. We've then got EGR stepper motor going in there. These have all got their little lock clips. One's locked in. We've got 
that one now which is going to come across I'll put it in there for now I'll just come back to that and then we can just fasten these looms up we've got a couple of fixings there that screw into the inlet manifold to hold them looms nicely in place stop them rattling about and the one for the controller with the glow plugs and then this side we've got this big plate three 10 mil bolts on this one holding it in place there and one little torque screw and this will keep those connectors nice and tidy so I've got the gearbox jacked up as high as it will go it's right up to the top there so hopefully it won't get interfered with by the two engine mountings that are still in the car right let's get the engine over we've got to get it off the stand when I took it out I lifted it with the my old bracket here my old engine crane mounting the only thing is when we point it back in we're going to need to get the angle just right to get it to line up with the gearbox so when it's going in we've, we've got to be sure because yeah, otherwise it won't won't go through the spigot this has got no kind of adjustment with it it's whatever the weight of the engine is is where you are so onto amazon and come up with this so this is a fully adjustable engine hoist so i can alter the angle of the engine just by winding the handle on the end which means we can get the clutch and the input shaft on the gearbox lined up perfectly it's free <laughs> I hope it don't break now because it's hanging in the balance. My 35 quid Amazon purchase, holding all the weight of the engine. Right, let's get it up in the air, see if we can get it up high enough to get it in. So we've got some manoeuvring to do. We we'll just wiggle this across and then we can get it lined up as best we can for now. Get it right up in the air. Hopefully I'm going to have some clearance on the bonnet at the top when I push the crane forward because it was really close when I came out. And if this new bracket's slightly longer, then it's not going to go but we're close we're over that there that's looking good i can drop it down slightly he's smiling he's happy yep 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 in you go just missing the bonnet dropping down as we go just making sure we've got all the pipes out of the way in it goes slowly down you can see down there how the clutch has got to line up and we're a bit high at the minute so let's drop it right down so using this new tool we can wind that handle and alter the angle you see how it's now tilting the engine's tilting backwards i'm just trying to get the the gearbox input shaft and the engine at exactly the same angle i'm gonna to have to take the engine mounting off this side which i'd left on to give us a bit of wiggle room there and you can see we're in it's going there she is it's gone in we're actually in the gearbox now and we could just use the bar to wiggle 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 just work off the back of that sump there pushing it in and then we can get a bolt in just to start to pull it up and again we're going to keep wiggling as we go in we'll wind it up a bit and then we'll wiggle oh look at that pulling it up lovely we'll wiggle it and do the same the other side yeah here it goes look here it goes we'll get a bolt in this side as well so just pulling that up nicely now make sure we've got nothing trapped yes he's happy it's in and then we can just put all the other bolts in now we can go all the way around doing them up as we go got these little ones down the bottom into the sump so we know that was all lined up properly when we did his sump removal we can get that engine mounting back in again get it in place and the same we'll put this one in on the other side don't forget the engine's still up high at the minute we've got to drop it down onto the actual rubbers so here we go yes that's on the rubber we can get the bolt in there as well one of those either side got the heat shield so that's it mounts are on let's get the crane out of the way we can undo the brackets from the uh, swivel engine mounting a couple of d-links and then oh, this is away away with you oh just a few finishing touches I feel like we've really made a, yeah, a big step now. Let's get on with it. This last belt housing bolt at the top here, it's really a nightmare to get to, but I can just get that up tight. And if I show you what I've used, right down the back, and it's literally the knuckle, oops, the knuckle bar with the single socket on it. You just have to work it up gently, gently, and eventually you get there. But yeah, that's what we've got, just the knuckle bar. You can't get a ratchet in, the ratchet's just too fat, but that does go in. Now we can't forget underneath we've got the earth strap to go on there 13 mil nut don't drop it <laughs> we'll just make sure that's up nice and tight 
and then we can finish off with this loom we're plugging that back into the fuse box you can't go wrong with these the connectors will only go on one way and uh, it's just yeah just rooting your wires making sure it's all neat and tidy but the plugs are in and we'll get the lid back on there keep it watertight and then we can just finish off again down the side we've got the air pipe to go and we've got coolant pipes to drop on so the connector plug that we had that was left over goes on to this the back of this fuel pipe here this is um for the fuel delivery so it's a low pressure sensor i think it also does temperature as well fuel temperature but we've got two jubilee clips holding that onto the pump we'll put the they're the two coolant hoses we'll clip them back on and then we can go for the injector loom We'll get that over the top and just kill it, clip it all in, feed it into the top of the rocker belt on the rocker cover and then we can feed these in and wrap them all around these injector pipes. We've got the fuel return pipe there on the diesel system and then the injector wires. These are a bit fiddly, getting them rooted right around the pipes in the right direction but again they will only go one way once you sort of follow the bends. Turbo pipe on. DPF coming up from the bottom with its little clamp that goes around the top there. We'll just rest that and then bring it from the top, put the clamp round. 113mm bolt there, holds that in place. We'll pop the pipes onto the sensors on this rail here. We've got pressure sensor off the DPF there. And then we'll just finish off down the back. A bit fiddly down here, getting these brackets sorted and the pipe work. But uh, once we're, we're there, We've got the loom now for the starter motor, which is just a big thick wire going down there. We can pop that back onto its its positive mounting there. We've that was also the vacuum pipe, and then we've got the the cover at the back for the soundproof. And I'll just drop these on here for now. On this side, starter motor going in, three bolts there. Just put them up finger tight, make sure everything's in line, and then and then nip them up which has got two wires on the back of the starter motor. Got the little one there, which is a solenoid feed. And then you've got your big 13 mil power wire. We've got the intake actuator off the turbo pipe there. We can put that on three bolts, holding that on. And then we can get the jacks out. Yeah, it's on the deck. We'll get the intake in and the air box. Oh, a nice new breather. That nice breather pipe going in, air filter going in, and the air mass flow sensor wire, and then a little air wire on the side there. Get some fresh oil in it. The engine holds 5.2 litres. I'm going for 5 litres to start with. That's that in. We'll reconnect the battery up, which is the terminal I ended up taking off. And we can put the covers back in. In the boot there. Now the car stood for such a long while, I'm going to get the booster on it. I'm going to put the booster, because we're going to need a lot of cranking to get this started. So I'm putting my big booster on here to save the battery. Then we've got the top done Artidiag machine. This is the Artidiag Pro, and I'm going to do a fuel bleed, which is a, it's going to prime the fuel system. So I can use this, go into the BMW settings, and I've got loads of fault codes in here. There's, there's loads of fault codes, and I'm going to try and clear them out. <laughs> there's a load of codes in there the codes won't clear which is a little bit concerning I've tried it two or three times and they won't go so I'm hoping that once we've got it started it may well sort itself out it may be just the fact that I've disconnected everything so yeah let's do the bleed anyway we'll go for the bleed we're going to the BMW again got me coffee and this takes a while because um, oh there it is I can hear the pump yeah the pump primes up you can hear it pushing the air through We'll have a quick look under the bonnet, make sure there's no leaks on the pipes we've taken off. You can see it counting down there. One minute, 17, 16. And then it's time to start the car. So let's crank it over and see how long it's going to take. I'm going to do this real time. I'm not going to skip anything on this so you can see how long it is. It doesn't sound too bad on crank. I'm thinking this could take a minute or so to turn over, it normally would do, because that fuel rail was completely dry, you know, we'd emptied all of that out, the pump was empty, so we'll just keep it cranking, keep it cranking, and hopefully, eventually, it'll clear and it'll kick in.
We'll just let the start motor rest a tiny bit. We'll go again and then, yeah. Come on, girl. I'm not concerned at this point because I know it's going to take a good while to get it going. It's getting a little bit faster. I can hear it sort of speeding up a little bit. Come on. No. Still not having it. Let's go again. Come on. I'll just let that starter mode to cool a little bit. There we go. Let's try again. Come on, girl. You know you want to start. Come on. Run, baby, run. I've got no antifreeze in it at the minute, so we can't run it for too long, but, oh, what about that? Sweet as a nut as well, look at it, no vibration. Please. Just to make sure there's no leaks on the fuel system. The alternator's working, I can hear it ramping up and the belt's sort of squeaking a bit, it's got some juice on there. Let's switch it off, get some coolant in it. I'm going to have a quick look down the back here, and I can see a little bit of moisture. I'm not sure if that's just something that a bit of diesel from the pipe when I fitted it or something, I'm not too sure. It's just a very small amount at the minute. But anyway, let's cack on and get some antifreeze in there. This is the Granville Green. It's BMW and everything compatible. I've completely drained the system down, so I'm starting from scratch with this. This is concentrated, so I'm going to go 50-50 with it. I'll bang some of that in, and then we'll get some water in. Now, to bleed this, we're going to start it. The heaters are on hot, maximum, so the heaters inside are on full, full hot. I've still got the little bleed nipple open on the expansion tank. And as I fill it up now with water, I'm expecting to see it coming out the little screw thread at the side there, see the little nipple? I'm, I'm waiting for it to start to appear out of there. Once that starts to, to dribble out there, I know, there we go, look, here it comes. I know we've got the air out of the system, so I can do that back up again. We'll tighten that down. You've got to be careful with this because they're only plastic, they're easy to snap. Just give it a white round, don't want that antifreeze getting anywhere. I'll give that belt a quick squirt, shut it up for a minute, a bit of silicon spray. That won't last forever, but it'll uh, definitely sort it out. I think I'm going to have to replace that belt because once you get contaminants on there, it's a nightmare. So, yeah, we'll get uh, a bit more of the antifreeze in. You can see that flowing now, you see the, the, the juice flowing from the jet there inside. That means we've got good circulation and there's no air in there. We'll just top it up with water, get the little floater up. Here it comes, it's coming. Sometimes I do stick in the tank a little bit, give them a bit of a poke and it'll come back to life. Here it comes, look, there you go. That's perfect, we'll add the lid back on and we'll get it up to temperature. Now I'm checking my leak at the back here. Well, what it turns out to be a leak. There's something going on. There's a little splashing at the back. Let me take this cover off and have a look. I have to say I'm really concerned at this. I've got this oil, you see it look, leaking out. Think, well, where on earth's that coming from? We've replaced the gaskets. What have I missed? Something here is not good. What have I missed? I can't see anything at all. I can't see where it's coming from. So let's fire it up and have a little look with it running. Oh my god, look. Oh my god, look at it coming out there. There must be a crack or something in that timing cover. It's just square as the chain's rotating, it's flicking oil at that casing and it's coming out. 
I must have missed a crack or something in that casing. So a little sting in the tail that. It looks like there must be a hairline crack or a, a small hole in the back of that cam cover. I've just been down to BMW, 280 quid for the new plastic cover. But it's got to be done. Whip this injector rail out, whip the injectors out, get the cam cover off and we'll have a good look at that and see if we can just see if we can see it. I mean, I can't believe I cleaned it all down and I didn't see anything wrong with it. There must be something there though. So uh, yeah, let's whip this top back off again. So that's it for this episode. What a nightmare, what a nightmare. That cracked top, possibly, must have a hole in it or something. We've got to get that changed over. That'll be in the next one. It's an episode I didn't want to make. I, I just wished it had worked. But no, we're going to have to strip it down. Injectors have got to come out. Inlet manifolds got to come off. It's The whole lot's got to come off the top again to get this damn rocker cover. And also, we've got that issue with the codes. We've got them met the, the fault codes that are still in there. So I'm a little bit concerned. I'm going to spend another 300 quid on a rocker cover, still knowing that uh, have I got another issue because I've still got all these fault codes that I can't clear. Hey-ho, let's do it. Next episode, we'll get that rocker cover off get a new one on there, put it all back together again, and hopefully it'll be okay. So yeah, join me in that one. Drop me some comments, uh, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe. <sighs> See you in the next episode. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.